Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Maria Does Stuff here on Flosstube. I am coming to you on this Tuesday, January 4th of 2022 with an update video. I'm here to talk about some stitching stuff. This is a channel that is mostly about cross stitch, although sometimes I will talk about books and knitting. Not today. Today is only cross stitch and some some life stuff maybe. Those are some things that I that I do talk about here on the channel. Uh, before I get into everything, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to both my returning viewers as well as anybody who is new here. I hope that you like what you see and uh, you find reason to subscribe and come back again. Today I've got some projects to show you, some things I have worked on. I have some plans, kind of, um, and we'll, we'll talk about it. And then I have some stashy stuff and um, I have an FFO to show you, which I'm very excited about. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we got on the agenda. I hope everybody had a good holiday season, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. Um, I hope that you had a good end of 2021 and that your new year um, has started off on the right foot. Uh, I hope everybody was safe and had fun for New Year's Eve. We had a very chillaxed New Year's Eve. Um, I fell asleep. Daddy woke me up at 11.59. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, so that we could count down the new year um, and yeah now we're now we're into January um, like I said today is January 4th and yesterday January 3rd we had a major snowstorm so Danny is home today because they have not plowed our our streets yet they haven't plowed our neighborhood yet um, and I, I'm not entirely sure when they're going to be able to do that apparently I-95 in this area is closed. I-95, Interna Interstate 95 is closed um, for a big long stretch because of the mess that was created yesterday and last night. Um, and so I think that I think that VDOT, uh, Virginia Department of Transportation, is probably a little bit overloaded. Um, so <laughs> we might be here for a little while. Which could be problematic because I'm out of coffee filters. <laughs> uh, Danny made me a, a cup of coffee this morning with a paper towel. So, worst comes to worst, I guess I can manage. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's kind of what's going on in our neck of the woods right now. It's beautiful, and I'll insert some pictures. Um, but it's a little, it's a little dangerous right now. Um, we're in that stage where it's a little bit warm. So some of it is melting, but overnight we're getting down into the teens, Fahrenheit, uh, negatives in Celsius, and um, so whatever is melting might be freezing. So it's a little dangerous right now. Um, so we're happy to just stay inside, hunker down, etc. So a um, few stitchy things to, to discuss with you. Before I get into that though, I would like to talk about something that... Um, I have been meaning to talk about for a number of videos now, not just Flossmas, but even beforehand, and for whatever reason, it slipped my mind. I want to say thank you to a few folks. Um, I want to say mm, beginning of the year, maybe? End of last year? I'm not entirely sure when I did it, but I started including a link to a Buy Me A Coffee, a K-O-F-I, um, where you could if you want it, and it's it's absolutely zero obligation, so please do not feel like this is a call out. Um, <laughs> but if you felt like monetarily supporting the channel, um, then I I created a link. I had a request to do that, so I did do that. Um, again, seriously, no obligation. But some people, I I never announced it on the channel. Um, but some people found it anyway, and so I just want to say a quick thank you to a few people. Who have who have supported the channel uh, and so we have a Karen Sharon Jennifer Lauren and um, a couple of anonymous um, supporters just thank you very much for for that I so appreciate that I appreciate the messages that come with it more than anything um, I have seen some other channels who are also doing these buy me a coffee links and they are using those uh, those monies to um, perhaps uh, stock up on on threads 
uh, to kit up projects. I think that I may start doing that as well, but I'm also going to put some of that money towards fully finishing because um, you guys know I have a, a very long history of not fully finishing things. Um, and so any and all uh, support in that way, um, I think I'm gonna put towards some fully finishing. And just a huge thank you to, to everybody who, um, who has done that. Okay, let's get into some stitchy stuff and I'm gonna show you uh, what I have worked on since December 14th, which was my last Flossmas video. If, like me, you got totally barred down and <laughs> overwhelmed by the number of Flossmas videos, then perhaps you didn't see my last one, but I chose to end Flossmas early um, just to give myself some a break for some stitching time um, and to enjoy the holiday season with Baby Does Stuff, her first holiday season. So um, here is what I was working on in that video. I was working on Farmhouse Christmas. This is Grandpa's Pickup block number three of the series. I have three blocks done and I'm just trying to work my way through. And I was most the way I think through the border of this block at the time of that filming and so I worked on this for at the rest of that day and got a fair bit done so that's that's where I'm up to this is a 32 count Belfast linen in flax by Zweigart and I'm gonna get the other the remaining six blocks on this piece of fabric and maybe even have some leftovers which would be cool um, so yeah, so that is the progress that I made and I'm really, really excited about that. However, <laughs> that evening, um, a certain, a certain foxy <laughs> chart arrived in my mailbox and I knew that I was going to start it just as quick as I could. And so I got up the next morning and I went into my fabric stash and I pulled a piece of fabric to start the Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. This is the first design in her A Year in the Woods series and I fell in love with this at first sight and I was so excited to get started stitching. I also already had the over dyed threads that are called for. It calls for two gentle arts and six DMCs um, and the gentle arts it calls for are burnt orange and chalk. So I started stitching on the 15th and was immediately, immediately in love with it and kept going <laughs> and kept going. This was the only stitch that I took with me when we went to Michigan uh, and um, I got to put in a few stitches and then we got home and I keep thinking, I should probably switch projects now. I should probably switch projects now. I should probably switch projects now. Okay, fine, I'm just gonna try to finish it. <laughs> to be honest, I did not think I was gonna finish it before the end of the year, and then I had one extremely good stitching day, and um, that kind of solidified the chance for me to finish it. So I did. <laughs> um, so on December 30th, I finished The Fox. So this never, this never made it onto floss tube as a whip as a new start, as a whip. <laughs> it was just a plan. So this fabric is 32 count Belfast linen in Dragonstone by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. This was a fabric of the month a bunch of years ago um, and a lot of times her fabrics of, the, fabrics of the month go into her line but this one it did not. I don't know if there's a reason for that if perhaps the dyes are discontinued or this was just a a limited dye for her um, but nonetheless that is the colorway that I used and I mean I, I just I couldn't stop it it was let me just tell you that this is one of the most fun stitches I've had in a long time I thoroughly enjoyed it um, I mean obviously right I don't I don't typically start and finish <laughs> um, not in the same month not in the same I mean in the same two weeks. It took me 13 total days to stitch on. And 
so I mean the proof is in the is in the stitching. <laughs> Ugh, I love him. I love him so much. So uh, let me talk about some changes that I made. Um, I swapped out the gassed chalk for the DMC equivalent 3865. Um, I did not have two skeins and I would have absolutely needed two skeins. I dipped into a second skein of the DMC on 32 count. Um, she advises that if you're stitching with two strands um, to, uh, to get two skeins of the chalk. And I just, I didn't have it. Um, so I just decided to go with the DMC. And I mean, really, gas chalk is basically a solid color anyway, so it wouldn't have been a big deal. Um, and I also chose the anchor black instead of DMC 310, as I do. Otherwise, the only changes that I made are unintentional. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, there's a charted snowflake down here. That one there, but I swapped it for my signature. It is a Jessica stitch with an S backstitched on the inside of it. Um, and the year in Roman numerals. This is stunning and I'm just so thrilled, so thrilled to have this first one done. So the question that I, that I am repeatedly getting with this one, I'm just gonna hold it up. Um, the question that I am repeatedly getting with this one is, am, am I going to do the whole series? And currently, yes. Um, I love this one. Block two, it should be in my mailbox anytime. Um, and that's got two swans on it, so you know I'm in on that one. Um, so far, I'm really into this series. I am not gonna stitch them all on one piece of fabric. I'm not gonna stitch them all on the same color of piece of, same color of fabric. Um, this fabric is a little bit, it's kind of two personalities. It's got this very moody green bit up here with the purples. And then down here, there's a little bit more undyed, and so it's a little bit wilder down here. Um, so I have I have no intentions of stitching them all on the same fabric. The way that Vinnie has designed them is that blocks 12, 1, and 2 go on a piece of fabric, and then blocks 3, 4, 5 on a piece of fabric, uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 10, 11, etc. Um, just to be probably seasonally appropriate for whatever whatever the uh, the design is. And all of mine are going to be on different pieces of fabric. Um, I might put another one on here because I have enough fabric to fit another one. I might be able to fit a second if I squeeze it in. Um, it would limit my margin, but I might be able to fit another piece in there. Because I don't know how I'm gonna FFO these, I wanted as much margin as possible, so I've got three inches. So I might not be able to fit a piece there, but that's okay. Um, anyway, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm picking fabrics individually for each of the pieces, and I have oodles of under the sea fabrics and hand dye fabrics by Stephanie in my stash for which to pick and choose as, as I please. So, super fun, loved this. Um, and you guys did too. You loved this so much, in fact, that it has nearly 2,300 likes on Instagram. To put that in per into perspective, in this moment, my hate has 2,100. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all like this more than in this moment? That's crazy. But anyway, so much fun to stitch. If you're on the fence about it, I had a blast and, um, I'd be willing to bet that you would too. So much fun. Okay, so let's get into the fun part. We're gonna do a pass the stash. I have my chart here. Um, and I know that a whole bunch of you have told me that after seeing my progress on it, you went out and bought it. Um, but hopefully there are still a couple of you that held out <laughs> and have not, um, because I would like to pass this on to somebody. So if you would like to receive this. Um, I will ship this anywhere in the world. Just be aware that the timeline for shipping um, is, it, it is what it is. And once this leaves my hands, 
I am no longer responsible for it. So if you are in a country that is not currently receiving outside packages or if um, shipping times to your country are exceedingly long and you're an impatient person, maybe hold off on this one. Um, but that's totally at your discretion. So if you would like to win this, um, I would like you to put in the comments the word Vulpes, V-U-L-P-E-S. I'll put it here on the screen. It's Latin for fox. Um, Vulpes. Uh, please do not say giveaway or contest or win or me, please. Just use that keyword. If you fit it in, fun, that's cool. If you just put that word, that's cool too, Volpez. Um, please be 18 or over in order to give me your address. Please be a subscriber to my channel. All of the good stuff when it comes to past the stash giveaways. So that is what I've got going up. I wanted to send along the uh, over dyed threads with it but this is all of the burnt orange that I have left um, if you're stitching this on a 28 count linen or, or a 14 count I would get two skeins of this um, but this is all I have left after being extremely frugal with it on 32 count so just be aware of that but you're just gonna get the chart for that okay so that took us to the 30th. I ended up not stitching on New Year's Eve. Um, I had talked about starting the, um, the pet memorial from Stitchy Pros on December 31st because it was the one year anniversary of Thor's passing. Uh, and I was too much in my feels on New Year's Eve in order to be able to do that. So I spent the day cleaning and organizing and getting prepped for the new year and for all of the fun things that I am hoping to be able to stitch on this year. January 1st, 2022. Uh, it's supposed to be new, new Year, New Start Day, and I just, I didn't have anything that I was dying to start, so I didn't. Instead, I decided to pull out a, an old New Year, New Start that I hadn't worked on in a extremely long time. This one in particular I haven't worked on since July of 2018 and it now lives in this bag by Stitch and Button. Super cute penguin. And that project is January by the Cricut Collection. Designed by Vicki Hastings. This was started January 1st, 2017 and I haven't worked on it in forever. So I was really excited to pull it out and put some stitches into it. And did I ever, <laughs> did I ever. Uh, so this is on a 28 count cashel linen in ice blue by Zweigart. And I did nearly 1300 stitches on New Year's Day. Wild, right? Danny went board gaming. <laughs> and uh, so I stayed up way past my bedtime to stitch a lot. Um, and so here is where I'm up to and then I'm gonna fold in and bring it in close when I first started this I kind of worked my way across. This is the R And so I haven't even made it to the Y yet, but that's the start of the R So there's a whole bunch of really weird little things going on here But let me fold up and I'll show you closer what I have done. This is using all of the called for DMC two over two and so this time I focused on finishing the J and um, there's a dove up here that still needs a few stitches. And then I got to work on this A. Um, and there's some back stitching needed in the J as well. But oh, I love it. I think it's really, really pretty. So some of y'all are probably very astute. And you've noticed that the center of this little clock ornament thing on the A is yellow and mine is not. So I go to stitch that section and I keep, I'm like, this thread, for whatever reason, it feels wrong. Why does that feel wrong? Did I pack the wrong color? What's going on? And I pull out the cover and I'm like, yeah, that's the wrong thread. But no, it's the right thread. It's 168 or 169, I can't remember which one. What is going on here? And then I'm like looking at the dove here, which is in a dark gold. 
and mine's in that same color. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Well, come to find out, the model stitcher changed some colors between the cover image and the chart. And they had already printed the chart. I found I found this all online, kind of an explanation for it. Um, and uh, they had already printed the chart. They just were waiting for the for the model stitch to stick on the cover. Um, so yeah, so we ended up with a different charted image and a cover image. They were different. So they say on there, if you stitch it in gold to match the cover, cool. If you haven't yet and you want to stitch it in the gray, that's the way it was intended, but neither is wrong. So I just went with the gray. Uh, and so that's what mine looks like so far. And I still have, there's like some floral bits on the outside. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that is. It has a clock face, but it's also kind of got a string like an ornament. Um, and this A has the similar thing with the moon and a clock as well. No idea, but um, I'm going to stitch them. So, so that is that. And I, I really enjoyed stitching this. Y'all remember, I was doing these, um, these Cricut Collection monthlies for a while there. Um, fairly consistently. I have four of them done. Ironically enough, only the short months are done. I have April, May, June, and July done. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, this was this was a lot of fun to work on again. It made me want to get to my other ones. I also have August and October on the go, and I'm looking forward to that very much. So that is January. kind of have a goal of about a thousand stitches on each of the projects before I switch and since I did that on the first uh, on the second I was able to switch to August quilt by Paula Vaughn this is from the quilts for all seasons book mine is all chopped up just to make it a little bit easier to use because it is a color chart and they use the same symbol on a different color field so a black and white copy is kind of useless. Uh, it's not very helpful. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that is August quilt. And I am currently working on this for a couple of reasons. But let me show you the progress and then we can talk about that. Let me move some of these parked threads. Of which there are a lot fewer than there were. So if you don't, if you get a little queasy looking at all those parked threads, it's not as bad as it was before. This is on a 32 count Belfast in cream from Zweig Art. And I have been focused on the left side here. Really, this part of the siding and the, and the railing and the rose bush, rose trellis, rose vines. I also had to do a little bit of quilt, um, the, mostly just the border this time around. Mm, I love this. So I told you that I'm trying to finish this within the first quarter this, this year, um, so it's going to get some pretty consistent work. Um, it was also block two for me for Whipco, and um, blocks two and 19 were called, so I'm working on it for Whipco. Um, on New Year's Eve, um, a bunch of people <laughs> um, headed by Kibi Quilting and uh, Pam of Just Keep Stitching um, did the, the New Year's Eve 12 by 12, 12 new starts in the 12 hours between noon and midnight. Um, and I was feeling I was starting to feel a little bit of FOMO. I had just finished the fox the night before. I wasn't sure what to stitch on, if I was going to stitch on anything on New Year's Eve. And I was starting to feel the FOMO. I was thinking, you know, I bet there's some things in my stash that I could start. And then Jemima, the rocking stitcher, told me about something called JOMO, 
which I had never, I had never heard before. It's another acronym and it's the joy of missing out. It's actually kind of an introvert's creed. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we are okay with missing out on some things and just taking the joy in, in what you have and what you've, what you, um, like you're not, you're, you, you don't feel like you're missing out on something um, and it's okay if you are missing out on something and just kind of embracing that and oh did I need to hear that <laughs> um, as I've as I've talked about fairly lengthily just just now I would like to get under 50 whips I can't do that if I'm gonna start 12 things just before New Year I like to stay under 13 new starts each year I can't do that if I start 12 in the last 12 hours of the year. Um, and it was just, it's just kind of the antithesis of what I would really like to accomplish. So I was perfectly content with watching everybody and their new starts and have all of that fun. Um, and I was perfectly content just, just watching. Uh, missing out, it was great. So Beth, uh, busy bee silly me on Instagram and her channel is also linked in the description box below. Um, Beth proposed the idea of putting 2022 stitches to represent the year into a project in the first week of the year. And I thought, oh, that's great. That is so, so much more up my alley um, because I would very much like to finish this. So um, very excited and uh, yeah, it was just it was just a really easy yes for me. Like, yes, I'm in. I'm totally in for that. So I'm working on this for that. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I'm also working on this for the new challenge with Daily 30 and Cross Stitchers Journal. It is a closed group, but their year long challenge this year, which you're going to hear repeated over quite a few floss tubes. Um, it's Animal Adventure. And I'm not going to go into any specifics, but it's essentially you have three projects and you have to work on them uh, each month for at least 300 stitches. And there's a whole bunch of different ways to to achieve that. Um, I don't I don't need to explain all the rules, um, but this is one of my projects for that. <laughs> so I'm quadruple and quintuple dipping with with this project and loving it. I am so excited to be working on it again. Um, you guys know I love this piece, so having a lot of fun. Currently I am filling in leaves over here. There are three or four leaf colors and I'm just filling them in. I'll take a picture and try to insert here um, so that you can see the quarter stitch <laughs> madness that I that I am and right now I enjoy quarter stitches that that doesn't bother me at all um, but it's a lot of fun so yeah really enjoying this one and my whip go goals are five days or 1500 stitches whichever I reach first but since I'm reaching for 20 22 stitches um, I'll work on it until I reach that point and we'll see how far that takes me um, I would really like to have all of the stitching done in February so that I can take the month of March to backstitch because I have not backstitched as I go and that was intentional. I would really like to see that dramatic before and after on the backstitch with this one because polyvons are notoriously backstitch heavy and I think that would be really fun just to see that. So it means a lot of work for me. Um, there at the end, <laughs> just when you think you're finished. No, not quite. I worked on August quilt on the 2nd and I'm working on it today, but yesterday. Uh, so I told you that we had some snow yesterday. I've told you that we, we had quite a winter storm yesterday. Uh, clocked in around two feet of snow. Uh, and so I was not feeling the new year new start. But a snow day stitch. I know that Julie at Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, she has um, historically speaking had a snow day stitch and I have always been so intrigued by that. But Virginia snow, man, you just, I mean, it's, it's just, it's unpredictable. 
we'll have we'll have a year where we've got a snow event like this and we'll have years where we get less than a few inches combined total um, so because we had a major snow event I thought I'm gonna start a snow day project and so I did I started a snow day project yesterday and I am so excited about it um, and I'm gonna be even more excited once I get through this big section <laughs> that I'm on so the project in question is Falling Snow by Shannon Christine Designs. I thought it was pretty, pretty appropriate given the reason for the start. I'm gonna insert a preview here because I have this digitally. It is Pattern Keeper compatible. Um, there's a bunch of beads and that part is not PK compatible, but that's okay, I'll manage it from there. It is big, it is beautiful, and it is on a fabric that, oh my goodness, is showing correctly. Ooh, this fabric. Is it not stunning? I'm not gonna lie, I feel like this fabric should be called Mika a little bit. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, so this is a 32 count Belfast linen in Caribbean blue or Caribbean blue, depending on your on your preferences, uh, by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. It is a stunning fabric. It is so bright and I thought it was perfect. Even if thematically it's not quite perfect, the color is, is gorgeous. So Shannon provides um, a couple of different colorways. You see the, the dark tealy bits? You can do it in that colorway, or she has a purple and a gold, um, or just pick two colors that you would like to go together, but the majority of it is white. Go figure. I am doing DMC 3865 because I like the way that that thread lays. Um, I do not enjoy stitching with Blanc or B5200, um, and it's, it's got nothing to do with the fabric behind those stitches. I just don't enjoy stitching with those threads, um, but I do like 3865, so that's the color I'm using. I did something a little bit different for me, and I started on the right-hand side, which I almost never do. Um, but I was not interested in stitching from left to right all the way across the top of this pattern, which is 208 stitches wide. I wasn't interested in doing that. Um, and I like, believe it or not, I stitch left to right, but I like working my way across a pattern from right to left, unless it's a hate. But I don't know why, but that's just the way that I, I prefer to stitch. So I'm kind of chunking this up and I'm going to work down a little bit and then work my way towards the left in more chunks. <laughs> and and that's kind of that's kind of the plan um, moving forward. This is gonna hang out on my Q-snap. Um, I might loosen it a little bit because I don't know what our next snow is going to be, but that will be the next time that I work on it. And this needle minder um, is was a gift from my brother. It says, I never finish anything from the Snarky Crafter. Um, so thanks, Matt. That, that was really cool. And I thought it was pretty perfect for a gigantic new start. <laughs> so that is Falling Snow. So that's what I have worked on. Let's talk about plans, I guess, kind of. I don't really have anything concrete to share with you. Um, so here's, here's some things that I think I may work on this month. For sure, for Whipco, I have August Quilt and Farmhouse Christmas. Those were my two and 19, respectively, that were drawn for January. So I'll give each of those at least five days or 1,500 stitches. August Quilt's gonna get a little bit extra. That's cool. I also like to work on Kindred Spirits by the Primitive Needle on the 13th for Dark 13 stitching, so you can expect that to come out. Um, let's see here. What else do I have? I have another Whipco board. I actually have three total Whipco boards, but one of them is for books. But I have another Whipco board that is secondary and it is absolutely not my focus whatsoever. But it's maybe some more options. I would really like to work on all of my Mania pieces, but I am not going to be able to rotate projects every day by May. It's just not going to be my thing. It's not It's not how I like to do things. Um, it's fun every now and again, but um, 
I just, I can foresee be, not being interested in doing that this coming May. So I chose to put my mania projects into another Wipco board. And so for this month it drew Sansusi by Long Dog Samplers, which I have some frogging to do, <laughs> and Castles by the Sea by Teresa Wensler, which um, I still need to finish kidding up. <laughs> so so that should be interesting. I'll, I'll see if I get to those. If I don't, no pressure whatsoever. I don't know. I'm sure there's some other things that I plan to work on, but maybe we'll just see, right? Maybe we'll see. Okay. So I think that's it for plans. Um, I know that I am notoriously one who talks about plans a lot um, and they inevitably end up changing. Um, but yeah, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like nailing myself down to one idea. Uh, I'm a little, I'm feeling a little bit more sweetly these days. So, so there's that. All right, let's get to some, some haul, some stashy stuff. And first, we're going to talk about an FFO. For Christmas this year, uh, my mother-in-law and my husband went in together to get something framed for me. Um, because I said that's really kind of on the only thing that I really want for Christmas. Um, and so they went in together to get a beloved project framed for me. And I am over, over the moon. I'm over the moon about it. So let me show it to you. It's big. It's really big. <clears throat> oh, glare. There she is. <laughs> you see how small this is? <laughs> this is wild, but that's what I gotta do. It's too bright outside. The sun reflecting off the snow. It's too bright. There we go. So this is Stargazer by Mirabilia. And she has triple mats. Black on the bottom to sort of anchor it down. Orange and maroon, of course. And then they picked this gorgeous frame. She's really big and really heavy. Um, <laughs> so, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous frame, kind of distressed. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Let's see if I can bring her in a little bit. They did such a really great job with framing her. Um, they took this to Michael's. And I knew what they were framing, um, but I did not know anything further than that. Oh, it's beautiful. So that she is going to hang in the stitching room um, slash kind of hangout room for Baby Does Stuff and I. Um, <laughs> she's gonna hang out in there. Oh, she's stunning, isn't she? I'm so excited about her, about having her done, fully finished and framed. This is really special to me because the chart and fabric and threads were all a gift from my in-laws for Christmas, oh, gosh, a whole bunch of years ago. Um, they gifted me with the called for linen and the called for threads. And of course I did a color conversion, but um, it's just very special to me. Very, very special. And of course I have talked ad nauseum about my stargazer conversion. My Remy. She's done. Oh gosh, she's so cool. So, so cool. So very cool. So, um, let's get into some stashy stuff. Um, I have another project bag <laughs> from Stitch and Button. This one, beautiful birch and cardinals. Love this. Um, my year in the woods is going to live in this, in this project bag. I thought the fox would make it, but I finished it before I got the project bag, so. <laughs> Which is okay. Gorgeousness. So I placed an order with Carrie. Um, she is Black Pear Stitchery, um, and she created 
some uh, needle minders for the Daily 30 group as well as for this year's year-long challenge, Animal Adventure. Yep. And those are gorgeous wood needle minders. She sent along a cute little thank you. And let me tell you, um, the packaging is gone because my daughter would not stop playing with it. Um, but it was so beautifully packaged with tissue paper, which is why BDS was going for it. Tissue paper. It's the greatest thing ever. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't have the packaging anymore, but it was beautifully wrapped up. Um, and uh, two needle minders can't travel alone, especially not so far across the pond. Um, so I, I bought some pumpkin counting pins as well. Um, which I think are gorgeous. Okay, so now let's get into some more, some more Christmas stuff. Um, these are some things that I bought myself for Christmas and then just told Danny to wrap and, <laughs> and give to me um, because I hit um, the jackpot on some um, de-stash. Um, so Kenny was putting up some Mirabilia's and so I picked these two up, who are both out of print. This is Rose Celebration, Mirabelli Designs number 23, and I have loved her for a long time. Doesn't she look very Grecian? I love that a whole lot. And Queen of Peace, which I'm a little shook. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was so excited. To, to get a copy of Queen of Peace. Mirabilia Designs number 58. And wow, I didn't realize she had so much Karnak. Five Karnaks. That's not very peaceful. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but nonetheless, stunning, absolutely beautiful. I really need to get going on my Mirabilias that I currently have on the go because I have so many that I wanna start, so many. But wait, there's more. The Primitive Needle Moon Sick and Tombstone Spots. And look, original purchase stickers are on there. $14 and $20. I did not pay original asking retail price for these, but um, the, the price was all right. And uh, I, I just never see these super excited for those perhaps when I finish kindred spirits maybe I'll start one of these and just always have a primitive needle on the go that sounds pretty cool so excited um, the person who was de-stashing this also had a blackened sky um, and something else something else that I wanted to get but was either outside of my price range or somebody had nabbed it first Anyway, so excited for those. Um, this really kind of excited me. Um, that, oh, what was it? It was a collaboration between Arlene and McKenna. Looks very much like that. Very cool. Okay, um, and last, um, so when we went to Michigan, um, we had a white elephant gift exchange, and I hit the jackpot, I think. So we were supposed to have a $50 spending limit, but apparently not everybody adhered to that. <laughs> um, and so I got, um, I ended up with a really, really nice, really warm throw and an incense burner and some chocolates and $50 cash. So those $50 cash went to the Scarlet Letter <laughs> and I picked up Elizabeth Isles um, because we were all supposed to start this for Laura's big birthday on January 1st and um, I couldn't I wasn't wasn't in the headspace to make this new start I didn't I didn't have fabric I wasn't pulling fabric um, hopefully I'll start this before Laura's next birthday um, but no promises there I, I have to get over the cherubs Either I have to not stitch the cherubs or I have to get over them. Because they're a little weird. <laughs> for me. For me. Um, I might I might just stitch the geode bird and the flowers. I might do that. We'll see. 
anyway um, and this is something that I had on my Christmas list and um, I, I'm so excited about it um, this is Jane Walker circa 1800 since nobody got it for me for Christmas I used my white elephant <laughs> to, to snatch it up I have wanted for whatever reason have been eyeballing illuminated letter samplers and that typically happens on these Scottish samplers um, for whatever reason I was just really in the mood for that and I was perusing Scarlet Letter as you do and I stumbled on this one and said yes that is my winner um, here is the original on the back stunning stunning so I ordered this on December 28th and they arrived all the way from Wisconsin on December 30, 30th. I don't even know how that's possible, <laughs> but nonetheless. So I was very excited to, uh, to get these. And so they will go into my stash and hopefully I will find an opportunity to start them. Maybe, maybe Sampler September. Maybe I will be able to start a few things for Sampler September this year. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Somebody remind me as we get closer. So that's kind of the end of the stash. I have a one, two, three stitch order that um, was not supposed to be delivered until tomorrow and it got here faster. And so it was gonna be delivered yesterday, but we had a snowstorm and that prevented it. So it might not be here till Thursday, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but that, so we'll, so we'll talk about that when it gets here. My plans for filming, um, I don't really have any plans for filming. I have toyed with the idea of filming, um, similar to the way that Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch films, um, kind of more vlog style and then compiling them all together every couple of weeks. That's kind of a cool idea. That might work better for me than these long sit, down, sit downs. I'm toying with it, but no, no official plans on the filming front. I guess I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> huh. So I'm going to head off here, get this thing edited. I have quite a bit of stitching that I would like to get done today. So that's it from me. Um, everybody, happy stitching. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. As always, be kind. And I'll see you next time.